The world needs messages of love, unity, compassion, and inclusivity now more than ever. And this podcast delivers that. Whether you're a parent, teacher, counselor, or energy healer, with the right intention, we all have the potential to be a healing presence for others. The truth is, we are all ordinary people capable of having an extraordinary impact. Imagine if we all did that on purpose. Join Global Impact Visionary Leader, Intuitive Healer, and Spiritual Mentor, Sue DeMay, for authentic conversations that will inspire you to become more of a healing presence in your work, in your relationships, and in the world. And now, here is your host, Sue DeMay. Welcome once again to the We Are All Healers podcast. And it's all based on the book. I'm interviewing the authors. I am your host, uh, Sue Dumay, and we are speaking with the authors from the co-creative book. We are all healers, ordinary people with extraordinary intention will heal the world. And for those of you that haven't gotten the book yet, I really encourage you to go out and, and pick up a copy. There's they're available in all the online bookstores and in ebook and printed book as well. So today I'm very excited to be sitting here with Yolanda Samiento. Yes, Samiento, yes. Samiento, I did it. I'm very close. Yeah. And Yolanda, Yolanda and I have known each other for quite a while. And when I first met her, she was a beacon of love, like just a loving presence. Like you could just, you could be around her and just know that she's just love embodied. And she wrote a story in the book. I was really honored that she felt a heart yes to be in the book and share her story because not only did I want a representation of a mother energy, but also a grandmother energy. And she embodies that. So welcome. Thank you for being here. Oh, thank you, Sue. I'm so happy to be here with, with you or with everybody. Mm -hmm. So let's start. Like, why don't you just share a little bit about what it was like for you to write your story and share your story in the book? Mm. Yes. Um, it was very interesting when you called me and let me know that, uh, I, you know, when you were guided to write the book and you were in the meditation, uh, I came up into the meditation um, because I had never written any, you know, any, or I haven't been part of any book. Um, so when you told me that, I, I completely, I was like, okay, well, you know, I'll trust. <laughs> I'll trust on that. And um as we start talking and, and you, you know, you saw uh, my excitement about, you know, when I was sharing that I was being a, a grandma. So, so yeah, so um, I just, uh, I have to come into a full trust on that process um, because I didn't know exactly, you know, what, um how I was going to start or what I was going to say exactly. But as we let mm, spirit go, you know, guide me through that process, you know, I start um, getting more connected into my role as a grandma. And I was, um, it was a beautiful experience because then it made me think about, um exactly what was the role that I was playing with my little ones. So I had two grandkids, um, one boy, which is uh, five years old, and uh, Natalia, the girl, who is um, three. So, and I really, you know, that was something that I thought, you know, from the beginning, my intention was, hey, what kind of grandma I wanted to be you know um and so so it was a process and then you know like kind of uh, reflecting on my on my day-to-day -day with them and and my intentions 
you know, my good moments and my, you know, my difficult moments as well. So, because not everything is, is you know, is, uh, is perfect. So, so it was beautiful just to connect to that, to, to, to say, okay, what am I playing here? What is, you know, like what my part has been and why I feel so much passion of being a grandma and to live, you know, like, you know, because my, 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 when I remember about my grandmas, I remember there was such a love and, and, and they, they have something in my heart that I always remember that the feelings, you know, with, with, especially with, with one of them. So, I I just um you know I wanna do the same thing with my little ones. So I love the experience. It was, you know, um I, I thought, you know, in the beginning I was like, oh my gosh, uh, I don't know how I'm going to do that. But at the end, as I walk through it, I realized that yes, you know, there is something there is a lot of things to say and a lot of things to reflect and a lot of things that I can share about these that, you know, that, that could be helpful mm-hmm. for some people. Yeah. I, well, your story definitely helped remind me, not that I needed a big reminder about my grandmother because she just embodied unconditional love for me. Right. So she was just that, that beacon of unconditional love in my world and I could do no wrong in her eyes, you know, yeah. she made everybody feel like they were the most special person in the world. Everyone she met, really. I I only discovered that later in life. <laughs> I thought I was the most special person in her life, but I realized she made everybody feel that way. So your story really reminded me of that connection with my grandmother and her embodied presence of love, unconditional love. And meeting you when for the first time, you reminded me of her even before you became a grandmother. So mm. when you became a grandmother, it was even more stronger and embodied. So when we talk about the book, it's like we are all healers. We are all healers because we can either play a healing role, be a healer in the world as a practitioner. But every single one of us, no matter what we do in the world, whether we're a grandmother, a mother, a teacher, or anything else in between, we can be a healing presence. Mm -hmm. And being a healing presence means we may show up as love. We may show up as peace. We may show up as something totally different. And everybody has their own, you know, can set their own intention of how they want to show up. Mm -hmm. But I love that question you asked yourself is like, how do I want to be, you know, how do I want to show up as a grandmother? How do I want to be uh, pr- how what kind of presence do I want to be in their life is really what you're asking right mm-hmm. how can I show up for them in the way that you know I would want yeah. to show up but also what they need how they need me to show up so being a healing presence is about yes showing up in a way that feels authentic for us and at the same time has you know it supports the other individual or or the group that we're working with Mm -hmm. so when you talk about your grandchildren or at least when we first talked about it yet that when you said that your eyes lit up like you you light up when you speak about your grandkids and that gift of being able to use that classroom as a grandmother with them to be a loving presence to be a presence of just like, it's like a loving embrace. You're like a hug, you know, you're just just like a hug. So when, when you're spending time with them throughout the day, you know, the times where you're together with them, I know it's probably more natural for you, but I love that the book and the message of the book kind of brought that in a little deeper. Can you speak about how it maybe deepened your awareness or your consciousness of making that more of an intended choice moment to moment? Yeah, I think is is more how I want to show up in everything. Mm-hmm. You know, is um like even, you know, even it's not like when I wake up in the morning, that's one of my prayers is is how I'm going to show up today, like how I'm going to be um, help for people, how I'm going to be the light, 
um, how can I be more helpful or, you know, my intention is like how I'm going to serve today, not only with my grandkids, but in my work, you know, in in my daily life. So I feel like, you know, as I get to work on myself more, um, yeah, so I wanted to show up more lovingly because I got to um, work on myself or, you know, like when I, and I, and I mentioned in, in the book that, you know, I had an experience that brought me to my knees and that was the moment um, that I decide, okay, I want to use this opportunity to grow from it and to be a better person to, in, in a way that to get rid of all the things that I, you know, that they, 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 I didn't want anymore to, to carry, that they didn't serve me anymore. So I start working on myself, finding, yeah, finding myself, like to get to know me more in a deeper level, in a deeper level. So that, you know, it, it takes me into a, a place where I, I wanna, how can I, you know, like, how can I be that shiny light, you know? It's like every moment and, and, you know, I'm not like that every moment and every day, of course, but that's what my intention is when I start my day. Mm -hmm. It's like, you know, and I need to center, like I need to, you know, like I have my morning routine, you know, that I need to connect with myself. I need to meditate. I need to, you know, I love to pray. So, so going to prayer, going into visualizing like how I want to, the day look like. Um, visualizing like how, you know, like the intention of, yeah, what kind of day do I want? I want a day, you know, that I feel loving and peaceful. Give me one second. And I have a little bit of a call, so. That's okay. I don't know what happened here. Okay, let me see. I'll just, I'll just chime in as you're, as you're taking some water. So the, the intention the first 15 minutes of every day and the last 15 minutes of our day are re it's like a beautiful sandwich of time it's the bread you know and mm -hmm. when we can set an intention first thing in the morning and really center ourselves and come into that feeling and essence of okay what do what intention do i want in body not just set an intention in our heads so when you're speaking about that first 15 minutes of your day, you're really embodying the intention that you're setting. You're not just like, okay, I'm today, I'm going to do this, just a head kind of decision. This is like a choice that I feel is from your heart, from your soul, from your spirit. And then you bring in prayer, you bring in meditation, you like you embody the feeling and the essence of your intention which really becomes such much more of a ripple effect and has much more of a, a genuine, authentic impact when you're going through your day as well. So I love that you start your day that way. That's right. And you know, sometimes I forget about the intention as the day goes, right? But it's like, that's okay. I always can choose again and choose again. And um, so I feel like from that, from from the knowing myself of what I want to be, it came the, the desire of me being the best grandma, you know, and the best teacher and, you know, and how can I play my role in the best way? So, yeah. So speak, speak share a little bit about your work because as a teacher, you have you know, a beautiful opportunity to be a loving presence or be a healing presence for your students. 
So I know you set your intention in the morning, but do you, how do you go through that in the daytime when you're with your students? How do you embody that intention? Yes. You know, many times I have to, to take a little bit of time to get out, go to the bathroom and then take a deep breath, go back to heart center and go back to, okay, I need a little bit of break. I need to breathe. I need to embody myself I need to feel my body you know it's like if I forget you know or if I feel that you know um I'm out of center um but all the things that I I have learned um through my process of getting to know myself in a deeper level I want it I have such a passion for that that I I wanted to teach it to the to the kids at school. And I think that passion came so strong that even my boss noticed that, that she opened up, you know, the class for me to start teaching all of that into the kids, like start teaching breathing, you know, like moments of taking deep breaths, take a pause and breathe. Moments of just close your eyes and, you know, start feeling your body and, or just feeling what you feel. Um, start talking about um, things like uh, what is gratitude and what gratitude looks like. Like things like that that I was using in my life that I was learning, I wanted to pass it on. So I remember... Mm, um, I remember that I I had a little space to work with the kids in that social emotional part in my class. And one day they told me that I couldn't use that space anymore. And he was so upset. I was like, what? But this is my only space to, to be, you know, to have a quiet space for my kids and talk about these things. And But then after I got, you know, very you know, kind of upset and stuff like that. And then I thought, okay, one second. And I'm going to trust. I know, I don't know. I got a, a sense of like I needed to trust that something better was coming. And um, I remember the the vice principal came to me and said, I said, I, I need a little room. I need a, a extra room. And she's like, well, let, let me look around. And then she found one room that it was already in use, but she talked to the people and the people would say that I was able to take it and use it. So that was a gift from that, from, from that situation, but I created a um, sensory room for the little ones because I work with special needs kids. So I created um, a sensory room with all, you know, smells and, uh, hearing things and I I put it with you know I put carpet I put sounds and lights and everything that I thought just for us to have a space that we can say you know what this is a place that we can come and rest mm-hmm. and that's it so from there I I said uh, I start teaching different virtues as well, like every day and every week, not every week, but say every, uh, not every day, but every week I will teach a virtue and we will talk about that virtue. And then, you know, I start researching and putting more into packages of songs related to like say love. If we're talking about what is love, what what is the meaning of love? Like what is, what is that? What it looks like, right? (laughs) And then, so I started bringing, you know, videos and I started creating jars of gratitude that people would start writing. And, and the thing was that what I realized was that it wasn't only for the kids, it was for the adults as well. So everybody was involved and everybody was having moments of healing, like people were crying. People were reflecting, saying uh, personal things that they would share with everybody and everybody started opening up in those circles. So 
kind of little by little was was something was being created that I wasn't, you know, I never imagined something like that will will happen. But it did, it did. And I think that, you know, sometimes we have this little idea about something, but when we give it to spirit, spirit has better planets and bigger planets that you know than us. So it has very beautiful and very healing to to have that space in my school. And it's, it has been very, very special for me and very purposeful. Well, it's such a gift to be able to teach children those kinds of tools, those kinds of foundation, foundational tools, right? And and I love that you even had an experience where the adults were appreciating is like, you know, we all can learn these things. We can all integrate these things and they don't have to be complicated and hard and and heavy. It's just like you say, it's taking a moment to pause, to kind of tune into your heart. How do you feel in this moment? What's really happening within you? And then finding those symbols or those tools or those those touch points in our lives that can actually center us and remind us just to be here now, just to stop and be and be present, be with our breath, take a moment, recenter, connect to yourself, or even just pause and notice what's really going on around you. Like to be, to be in that doing mode, you know, as a teacher, I can imagine there's a very strong, like doing mode. I got to get these things done. I got to, you know, ticking off the boxes and get these lessons taught or whatever it is, but to be present, to be in the doing, to be love in the doing, to be, you know, peace in the doing, to be grounded in the doing, to be listening in the doing, you know, really mm-hmm. present and, and noticing. So with special needs, obviously with special needs kids, you're, you're listening you have more than one ear, you know, more than just your physical ears that you're listening with because you're really tuning into what are their needs because they can't always communicate. They can't always identify and they can't always communicate their needs. So when we can approach everyone in every moment, just with that deep presence and, and being open to listen and tune in and pay attention, you know, there's what they're saying and then there's what you feel about what they're saying. It's what, what is the energy behind what they're saying? When they say, I am good, do they really, can you feel that they're good? Mm -hmm. Or, you know, do we need to lean in and, and maybe give them a little bit more space to share or a little bit more space to express or a little bit more of an opening for us to, to listen longer, deeper. And they feel the sincerity of us, you know, when, when we say, you know, how are you feeling? And, and, you know, our response, they know if it's sincere or not. Right? And so you're talking about that deep connection of um of the present, you know, to be present with them, you know, when when they are saying, you know, when they even if we, you know, some of my kids they don't speak. But just, you know, to be able, you know, to f- be in our present, both of us, you know, when we're one on one. And and allow them to to be as well, you know, and 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 choose, and you know, uh, you know, sometimes we want to control, you know, them, and you know, let's do this and do that and be so um, military. But you know, it's like uh, in that in that room, I want them to be to take charge of themselves. Okay, this, this is your space. What you wanna do? What you wanna? you know, listen or, you know, anything. So, um, so, uh, yeah, and, and I want, I wanted them, I know how important it is to have tools in your toolbox and tools that are easy, you know, like when they need it, just, if it's just a deep breath, if it's just tapping, you know, I teach them tapping so they can feel the body. If, you know, um, if it's just dancing, you know, we do dancing too and singing and whatever is needed uh, for the moment for them, you know, it is helpful to have that box and say, okay, I'm feeling a little off. What do I have in my toolbox that is helpful? You know, my breath. Okay, let's 
take a deep breath. Let's relax, deep breath. Go within, you know. I remember when I was teaching them to, you know, just close your, their eyes. And it was so hard for some of them. They couldn't, you know, they would be like, try to close it but open and, you know, and then see them eventually just to rest, you know, just closing eyes and resting. So beautiful. Mm -hmm. So I, I feel like, oh, you know, all these little tools are so helpful, you know, that they not only they teach as we teach, but they learn as we demonstrate to them, you know, as we demonstrate to them. So it's either both ways. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And it, when you said that some of my students don't speak, I kept hearing the words and, and you have, because you are so present, they feel heard. Even when they don't speak, they feel heard because you're really listening to more than the words. You're listening to the silence. You're listening to their body cues. You're tuning into their energy. You're tuning into, you know, it's like you're learning how to communicate with them in the subtle ways that they communicate and you're learning how to listen to that. Mm -hmm. Imagine if we all did that with each other, we were all like present with each other and paying attention mm -hmm. and noticing and, and feeling and sensing and experiencing all of the subtleness of our communication, like 90% or more of our communication is nonverbal. We have words. Yes. Many of us can speak, not all of us, but and even those that can speak, you know, have the verbal ability to speak, don't even feel like they have a, a, a voice or they're afraid to speak, you know? So when we can listen, like really listen and be present with others, it becomes such a gift because we get so much more information mm -hmm. than what's being communicated. And Lord. I'm just reminded of, I remember my, some of my teachers in school, and those, those teachers that just really made me feel loved or made me feel welcome or nurtured or cared for or that I mattered, right? There's these teachers that really left an imprint in my heart and in my experience and in my life. And, you know, I want everybody, I just want everybody in this moment to reflect back on you know, who's that's what's one person that really left an imprint? And what about them left that imprint? Is it something they said? Is it is it a presence they hold? Is it the way they were listening and leaning in and really paying attention? Like, what quality did they hold that really helped you? And then invite that quality within yourself. And it's okay, how can I be that for someone else? We don't have to be a teacher. We don't have to be um, a, a public speaker or, you know, any kind of hold any role at any single, any one of us at any time can have that impact on somebody, even just with a smile. Yeah. Um, I appreciate oh, what you're yeah. saying. And I appreciate the presence you hold for, for the children you're working with, but for everything, I, I, I really feel like I know if I met you on the street and I didn't know you, I'd be like, oh, she's just, yeah, I would still feel that same feeling. I'm like, there it is, love embodied right there. <laughs> Thank you. Yes. And even, even, you know, when I started my profession many, many years ago, I remember about hugging. And you know myself, I'm very huggy. And, um, and I know this is a really touchy subject, but you know what? You know, kids need hugs and you know, these special needs. Some of them, yes, they don't want to be touched and we respect that. But some of them, they are dying to, you know, that loving hug. And, and of course, you know, we always ask and I ask, you know, and but but they want that too, you know, like that part of, a, you know, a hug. Do you need a hug? Yes. Okay, it's okay if I hug you. Yes. Yeah. You know, all of these little things that I feel like, you know, they, they need and they, 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 they will let us know as well what they need. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. They, they always, everyone can let us know what they need and we can even intuitively get a sense for what others need if we're, if we're really listening and we're leaning in and paying attention and we're being present. We get a lot more information than we realize. Oh, yes. Yeah. yeah.
the the vision of the hug I had is when you were saying that it's like even those that aren't comfortable with touch or don't want that hug. So I know some special needs individuals are sensitive to touch, like you were yeah. saying. But but even like our presence can be like an energetic hug. It's like a loving embrace without the physical touch. Yes. But then when we are able to do the physical touch, you know, when when there's an opening for that. Mm-hmm. And we can hug and embrace each other. It yeah. it just feels like, you know, so such a it it just allows us to just feel more connected. And I know a lot of people are feeling separated from the whole pandemic thing and you know social distancing and all of that. And I know that we're coming back more into like you know being in each other's spaces and you know having those the ability to hug each other again. Yeah. But I just need everybody to recognize that your presence is like a hug. Your presence can be a hug. And it can have an impact on someone, whether you give them a physical hug or not. And it can be even a stranger as you walk by. So just recognizing that it's it's, every moment is an opportunity to inspire, to empower, to infuse someone's life with yeah. an essence of love or healing or peace or joy or whatever it is yes. yeah yeah and we don't know with a smile with just yeah. paying attention with what you know with any action coming from us how can change the life of one kid you know like you know, they will remember, oh, one day my teacher, you know, just was so listening to me and support me on this or that, whatever. But mm-hmm. it is it is it's essential for us to play our role, you know, our part. Yeah. There was a, I'm just having a memory of, well, I was at an event and there was somebody who was, Um, he was actually from Mexico and he had a really strong accent. So I was like leaning in to really listen and capture because his English was, you know, he was doing his best to speak English. He was kind of going back and forth from Mexican (laughs) into Spanish to English. And I'm like leaning in and I'm like listening. And I, I was, I, I had direct eye contact the whole time. And afterwards he was speaking to somebody and he's like, you know, Sue, he goes, I really feel like she, she was the only one that was, would look me directly in the eye and was really listening. Everyone else he he encountered was kind of like, you know, fluttering around and he, but it was, it struck him. Like it actually struck him and impacted him. And he shared it, how grateful he was for that experience. And that, that I made him feel really heard and seen which I feel like a lot of people are yearning for right now to be seen, to be heard, to be understood. Yeah. It's like without saying, you know, I see you, I feel you, I am here for you. Is you know, is is your presence. That's your presence. Yeah. And there is, you know, many times we don't need to do it, need to say anything. It's just, you know, that loving presence. And, you know, it's like also what is in our minds, you know, many times I'm saying, I bless you, I love you, I I bless you, and I love you, I'm here, you know. It's in my mind. I'm not saying it, but it's in my mind, you know, as I look at them. So they, you know, like we were saying, we don't need to say or, or do the action, like, you know, just by thinking and sending that loving energy they can feel it so much. They they they, they sense it so easily, right? Mm-hmm. I love that. We can end with that. Bless you. I love you. <laughs> Bless you. I love you. I see you. Yes. Yeah, that yes, feels really yes, good. yes. 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 Well, thank you for being such a beautiful, loving, healing presence in the world, and for showing up, and for showing up with such clear aligned intention to embody that in every moment of your day and i appreciate you and um and all the messages and what you do in the world so thank you oh thank you thank you i'm so appreciated as well for our friendship and you know for the experience that i had with the book and 
and you know i invite everyone to, you know it's such a beautiful it's so juicy i like to say it's juicy it's so beautiful i love it i love all the messages all you know is is very simple lives that we are you know reading in the books that you know and simple jobs that all have and but you know how we share how we presented ourselves you know in every moment so i i invite everyone to you know get the book it's such a gift and thank you sue thank you for being such a loving presence as well thank, thank you so you. much yeah thank you the book is available on all online bookstores it's called we are all healers ordinary people with extraordinary intention will heal the world and you know we talk about um being a healing presence this book i don't know about the ebook part of it but everybody who's picked up this book or bought this book and held it in their hands the moment they held it or they see the cover they're just like <gasps> like they feel it they this book is so infused with such healing potential such loving presence such authentic voices um, a variety of voices and su mm -hmm. such such authentic loving voices so in just holding the book is healing just ordering the book is healing but <laughs> reading it is like you say it's just full of so many gems insights and things that people can do right away to just to shift how they are being in life yeah thank totally, you yes. mm -hmm. and this time of life that we need to hear these messages mm -hmm. we need to hear this message and you know sometimes it's like if you know we have somebody in mind as well to send it to them because it's a gift a beautiful gift as well to to read it so yeah I there's a lot of people gifting this and people people that wouldn't normally pick up a book that are called we are all healers are actually picking it up and going like wow like they're having real openings in the mind and real insights coming in so I'm really excited about the potential this book holds um, and just a reminder for everybody to 100% of the royalties for this book are going to the Heartland Living Foundation so that it's actually giving back as well. Mm -hmm. So when you're buying your book for you, you're paying it forward at the same time. So it's a gift that keeps on giving. Yes. So yes. thank you for being here. I appreciate it. Oh, thank you. you. Thank you, yeah. Sue. And thank you for, you know, thank you, everyone. Thank you. Blessings to all. Yes. Blessings. So I appreciate everybody who's listening. Come back each week and each episode and listen to the authors tell their stories. And then I will be interviewing ordinary people with extraordinary impact that are having extraordinary impact in the world as well. So more to come. Continue to check out the podcast as we go along. I love you. I appreciate you. I honor each one of you. Love and blessings. Thank you for joining our global healing movement and podcast inspired by the international best-selling book. We are all healers. Ordinary people with extraordinary intention will heal the world. Order your copy today on your favorite online bookstore. A hundred percent of the royalties go to support our Heart Love Living Foundation humanitarian projects. Together, we can uplift humanity and unify us in love for each other and our planet.